What's up guys, welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to make the best southern style homemade cornbread dressing but first before we get started I'm going to show you guys how to make a homemade stock so in this video you're going to get two in one so let's get started first you want to start out by having a tall pot with a whole chicken or any chicken parts of your choice you want to have a season blend then you want to have your vegetables now here I have celery, bay leaves fresh thyme, green bell pepper, carrots, and onion. I got one whole onion quartered. And as usual guys, everything that I use will be in the description below with the measurements. First, you wanna start out by adding water to your pot until the chicken is covered in water. Okay, that should do it about there. Now you wanna go ahead and add your seasoning blend to it. So the seasonings that was included in this blend was paprika, chicken bouillon, black pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. Don't forget guys, everything will be in the description below. You just wanna give that a mix to let it get, you know, incorporated into the water. And guys, make sure that you clean your chicken before you, you do this. You don't want any floating pieces of hair or, you know, any uh, anything else on it. So make sure you clean your chicken. All right, I'm gonna add the bay leaves, the thyme, green bell pepper guys this is going to be so flavorful make sure that you follow this step by step the carrots I'm gonna put the onions I just took one whole onion and I quartered it you don't even have to really like break it up because it's gonna break up as it cooks and now we have celery this is going to be some goodness happening in this pot. Uh, you just want to give it a little push. Make sure everything is submerged in the water. I could have done this on the stove, which I should have, but I felt like this would be a better angle to show you guys. And plus, you know, all the stuff that I had. So we're going to cook this on the stove for about 45 minutes to an hour until the chicken is fork tender. If it doesn't fall off the bone, it isn't ready. But as usual, guys, you know that I will show you exactly what it's supposed to be looking like. So I'm going to get this on the stove and we'll move along to sauteing our vegetables. Hey, guys, before we get to sauteing our vegetables, I want to show you exactly what they're supposed to be looking like. But before I do that, let me tell you exactly what I have on this plate. I have celery, green bell pepper, onion and red bell pepper. So you want them to be as fine, as finely chopped as you can get them but not too, too small. See that? That's the way it should be looking. All right, let's saute them now. All right, we're gonna get a half a stick of butter into the pan so we can saute our vegetables. Let that melt down. Now let's add our vegetables to that melted butter. It seems like it's not, but trust me guys, it's not. Guys, you wanna cook these just until they're tender and slightly translucent to bring out the flavors before we add them to our cornbread mixture. So let me let this cook down and I will come right back as soon as it looks the way that it's supposed to look. Okay guys, so our vegetables are done and here's what they should be looking like. Can you get a good look on that? This is what I mean when I mean translucent, just enough, not cooked too soft. So I'm gonna let these set aside and allow them to cool before we add them to our cornbread mix. I already made some homemade cornbread a little while ago and I let it cool just so that it can be crumbled up. And the recipe to this will definitely be in the description below. And I also over baked it just a little bit, about 10 minutes extra just to get the nice brown color on it and to make sure that it was not too moist inside because you don't want a moist cornbread that's too soft. And also, just to let you guys know that it's always best to do your cornbread like the day before or earlier in the day before you prepare this dish so that all of the moisture out of the cornbread will be absorbed and it won't be, you know, too mushy. So that's the reason that I overbaked it to make sure all of the moisture was out of it. So without further ado, let's just give this a, a cut down the middle. It'll just be easier this way to break it up. You know what I'm saying? 
see this is what you want it to look like not too moist you want a dry cornbread smells good <laughs> all right so i'm gonna break this up into this bowl over here and if you don't get to break up all of your cornbread as fine as you like it to be it's okay because once we add our stock to it all of this is gonna break up anyway so don't 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 sweat it you just want to give that a slight crumble and yes my hands are clean <laughs> so to this cornbread crumble I'm also going to be adding some of this Pepperidge Farm classic stuffing this is a 12 ounce bag I'm only going to be ha adding half of it okay now we just want to mix all of that together Guys, this smells so good. All right, guys, so I'm gonna let this hang out until our stock is ready. And I'll be right back when it's time to add everything else. All right, my people, it's been about an hour and our stock is done. Look at that richness, that beautiful color, and it's flavorful. I've already tasted it to make sure I don't give you guys a bad recipe. And I just want you to see how tender this is and you want to make sure your meat falls right off and it's tender just like that that's how you know it's done the whole chicken broke up so so that's another way of knowing that the stock is done okay so let's drain this so we can separate the stock from the chicken and the, the vegetables in the pot Alright, so everything is out. So here is our stock, homemade chicken stock. Look at that, guys. You don't need to buy the store-bought. This is easy to do, but if you must use the store-bought, that is okay also. Alright, guys, so we have our stuff and mix mixed with the cornbread crumbles. And it's okay if it's a little, you know, like not broken up all the way, meaning like this, because once the liquid, the stock hits it, it's gonna break up anyway. So let's proceed. So to this, now I'm gonna be adding my cream of chicken. Okay, sorry, that was cream of celery. Now we're gonna add in our cream of chicken, okay? Our second can of cream of celery. Whoa. Okay, and our second can of cream of chicken. There you go, see that? So now we're gonna add in our vegetables that we sauteed, the peppers, the onions, and the celery. I'm gonna add half of this at this point, then I'll add the other half once everything is mixed through. You just wanna give this a little mix to kinda get this started before we add the stock. Okay, so let's add that stock in there. I'm gonna add a little more. Guys, you don't want this to be dry. So when it has that soupy look, that is totally fine because that's what you want. Because remember, this is going to cook and you don't want it to be dried out. So make sure that you mix this thoroughly and you get everything incorporated. And guys, also, I didn't make the cornbread on camera because I'll be trying to make these videos as short as possible, you know, so that you guys can, you know, view the entire video. Hopefully you are. So the recipe will be in the description below for the cornbread. It doesn't have to be pretty. You need to remember that because the cornbread is going to be crumbled and cooked all over again with a bunch of other stuff. So don't worry about if your cornbread doesn't come out so pretty looking like if you was eating it as a, you know, part of your meal. Okay, we're going to add a little more broth and we're going to hit this with our poultry and sage seasoning and a little butter. And guys, at this point, you want to make sure that your oven is being preheated. I have mine preheated to 350 degrees, and we're going to be cooking this for about 45 minutes to an hour. And make sure that you taste as you go because there aren't any eggs in this dish. So taste as you go to make sure that everything is to your liking. Okay, so let me start adding in that uh, 
that poultry seasoning. I'm going old school with it. I'm using bells. <laughs> so let's do that. And remember that uh that bag of Pepperidge Farm crumble mix. We you know that has seasoning in it too. So be careful not to put too much. Definitely be careful with the uh, poultry seasoning. Now I'm gonna go on with my sage. You want to be careful with this part too <laughs> with the sage because that is strong and you don't want to overpower it with that uh sage flavor and also not put too much in because it will turn your your mixture too dark and it won't look appealing it's gonna come out looking like meatloaf if you do <laughs> okay so let me get a spoon or fork or something to taste this let me mix that a little more I will be adding a tad bit more broth, and remember, we're going to add the remainder of those onions and peppers in there. Mmm, 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 mm. man! Oh, man! Mmm, guys, I could eat it just like that. <laughs> like seriously, that is so good. Oh my god. Now let's add the rest of these peppers and onions. Now that's that. Let's get that mixed in there. Then we're going to add a little more broth. And then this baby is ready to go. And make sure you grease your, your bacon dish, whatever you're choosing to use with some butter I will be showing you and we're gonna also add a little bit of butter in here like some softened butter to help give it that nice golden brown color okay got the butter here mmm guys this smells so good all right this is the consistency you want watch the way it falls off of the spoon if yours look like this when you do it then you've done a great job all right so let's add that piece of butter in. I'll put about two tablespoons in there. Okay. Then we're gonna mix that in. And this is gonna melt because the stock is still fairly warm. Make sure that it's melted and it's mixed all the way through because you don't want a clump of butter inside of your, your mix when you go to bake it. Okay, so let me give this one more taste to make sure that we are officially good to go. Mm. Guys, that is good. I'm loving this. <laughs> like, seriously. All right, guys, so let's get our bacon dish ready so we can pop this in the oven. All right, guys, so the bacon dish that I'm using is a glass bacon dish, and I greased it with some butter. So now all we got to do is add our perfect cornbread dressing mix. So let's do that. Now you just want to smooth it out. Guys, this smells so good. So now we're just going to pop this in the oven for about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your oven. But make sure that you check it at least 40 minutes into its cooking process. So I'm going to pop this in the oven. And when this bad boy is done, I'm going to take it out and show you guys. And then we're going to plate up and try some. Up. So guys, I thought that while I was dressing this in the oven, let's make a quick gravy. A chicken gravy for it. So the chicken that we made the stock from, I took a little bit of it, the white and dark meat, and I shredded some of it up. So we're gonna be using that for the gravy, okay? So we're gonna start out with our butter. I will also list, I will also be listing the, uh, the ingredients to this gravy in the description below. So yeah, there's a little water in there, but it'll evaporate, don't worry about that. So I'm gonna let that melt. Okay, so that's melted down enough. Now I'm gonna add some flour. Let that get all mixed up in there. We're gonna create a little roux before we add our stock, which is gonna make this gravy so perfect. And we're gonna drop in our shredded chicken. You're gonna need about a half a cup of that. 
and add a little bit more flour. All right. All right, so this is the consistency that I'm looking for. And you don't have to cook this long to achieve any brown color because the brown color is gonna come from the stock once we add that. Okay, so we're just gonna keep stirring this around. I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. We're just cooking this for about three to four minutes to cook this flour taste out. So our gravy doesn't taste chalky. Just keep stirring it for a minute or two to make sure that it doesn't clump up. You don't wanna make dough and have little dumplings floating around in your gravy. So this consistency right here is perfect and it has cooked long enough to cook out the uh, flour taste so your gravy wouldn't be chalky like I mentioned. So right now I'm gonna add the broth and you don't need to add any seasonings to this gravy because if you followed my instructions to make the stock, you're gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna gradually add this. Ooh wee. Okay, so we're gonna use it all. Make sure your flame is low. Mmm, guys, this smells so good. All right, guys. All right, so I'm gonna stir this a little bit. And remember, you want this gravy to be a little on the loose side, not too thick, because you don't want it to clump up. Remember, it's going over your dressing, not rice. Okay, so you want it to be able to run a little bit. So now I'm gonna add little black pepper. Then we're gonna give this a taste to make sure that we don't need any seasoning, but I'm almost pretty sure that we don't because that stock was made to perfection. Okay, okay, this is the perfect consistency for this gravy. You see this? This is what you want. The gravy should be looking like that, okay? No other way. That's the way it should be looking, okay? So I'm gonna let this go for about a minute or two just to let the flavors marry together. But before that, I'm gonna add the chicken, of course. Now we're gonna get that in there. Mmm, 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 mmm. Y'all better make this for Thanksgiving and stop playing. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, so I'm going to taste it. I'm gonna grab that spoon back. I'm gonna show you the consistency again. See this? This is what you want. It should not be too thick, okay? Mmm, 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 mmm. Guys, oh my God. Like I can't explain the flavors that are in here and how perfect everything tastes. Oh my God, yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry guys, but I am hyped over my own cooking right now because everything came out so perfect. So this is done. We don't need this to cook anymore. We're gonna turn this off. And remember, I'm gonna list the ingredients in the description below so that you can make this perfect chicken gravy for your dressing. All right guys, so I just pulled this out of the oven. I've let it go for one hour and this is what we have. Doesn't that look beautiful? That butter that we added to the mix gave it this nice brown color. So I'm gonna let this cool for about 15, 20 minutes because I don't wanna scoop any out while it's piping hot. I want it to get some, some form to it and uh, we'll plate it up and taste it. Mm -mm. Let's scoop some out, guys. Wow, look at that. Look at this. Mm. You see it still has its moisture. It's very hot. And it held up. Let's put it on the plate.
Here's some of that nice chicken gravy that we made earlier. That is so flavorful from our chicken stock. Mmm. Guys, this smells so good. I can't wait for y'all to try this recipe. Trust me, you're gonna love it. Now let's get a little of that cranberry sauce. Let's drop that on there. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. By the way, I made this uh, cranberry sauce homemade. I'll put the link in the description below so that you can uh, check that video out. It's very short. Look at this, guys. Doesn't that look good? All right, let's taste it. First bite goes to you. Mmm. Wow. That gravy definitely balances it out. Let's try some with a little cranberry sauce. Mmm. Guys, I recommend that you try this recipe. Trust me, if you do, you will be the talk at the table during Thanksgiving dinner. Trust me, it's so good. And... Guys, if you did, please make sure that you like this video. Definitely subscribe to this page for more recipes like this. I'm going to be doing a Thanksgiving series of side dishes. And I definitely want you guys to follow these recipes so that you can be the talk of the table. All right, guys. Till next time. Thanks for watching.